Today, you're going to meet a woman who claims that she was born with a special skill and has unlocked what she calls the secret language. I've always thought this was true. The secret language of babies. They have a language of their own. When Priscilla Dunstan was just a toddler, her parents discovered she had a special gift. From about the age of four or five, my mother used to play a Mozart concerto on the piano and I would play it back note for note, having heard it only once. Everybody realized at a young age that I had a photographic memory for sound. Priscilla says she was able to hear things others could not. I found that quite confusing as a child and even as a teenager. At school, my photographic memory helped me because it meant that I could remember everything that the teacher said without having to take notes. Her remarkable ability even helps Priscilla detect people's moods. She says she can diagnose an illness all based on what she hears. When I hear somebody's voice, I'm picking up color and texture and vibrational rate and I'm listening out for pulse. There's the English that they're speaking and then there's this whole other language underneath. The mysterious second language took on an astounding new meaning when Priscilla became a mother to her baby Tom. Because of my gift for sound, I was able to pick out certain patterns in his cries and then remember what those patterns were later on when he cried again. At this stage, I thought that the meanings that I'd written down was just a little language between Tom and I. Then I went out shopping and I realized that other babies were saying the same words. I realized that there were five words that all babies say, regardless of race and culture. So then I started to realize that this may indeed be something a lot bigger. I think this is so exciting, don't you? Because Priscilla Dunstan says that she has tested her baby language theory on over 1,000 infants around the world, all races and colors, and you believe that babies are talking to us. Yes, I do. It first started with my son, mm -hmm. and I realized that um, you know, his cry, he was trying to communicate something with me. And then I realized that it was actually a reflex, and we all have reflexes, you know, if we mm -hmm. hit our head, you know, the doctor checks our reflexes mm -hmm. to make sure that we're okay. And when sound is added to these reflexes, you, know, you get a particular sound, which mm -hmm. we're calling a word. So babies all around the world have the same reflexes, and they therefore make the same sound. So all babies around the world, regardless of what um, race or nationality they are, yeah. speak the same language. They do. They it's have, baby language. Yeah, they have I've the always language. thought that. First, take us through those five sounds, which are? Okay, the first word is ne. Ne. And this is the word for hunger. Oh, okay, so that's ne for hungry. I'm hungry. What's the next word? The next word is owl, and that's the word for sleeping. Very good. Now, you've uncovered a word that you say means discomfort. What is that? Yes, this is the word he, and you're listening for the H part of this sound. Because he and ne are very similar. They are. They both have the S sound, but you're listening, in, with ne, you're listening for the n part, and with he, you're listening for the he. Yeah, that's yeah. so fascinating, isn't it? So, Nair means I'm hungry, yep. Al, and Al means sleepy. So I'm sleepy. That's when you'll put your baby to sleep. And, and, he, means, and he means I'm, dis, I'm in com I'm yeah, discomfort. So, I'm that's uncomfortable. when you'll check to see whether they're hot or cold, or whether they're in an uncomfortable position, and this is when you'll change their diaper. Okay. So, what is the next easy. sound? Very easy. What's the next sound? <laughs> the next sound is air, and this is a lower sound. So, if you imagine that your stomach is tightened down here, and you go, breathe. Breathe in to your stomach and go. Oh, I know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I know what that means. Yeah, you know what that is. That means. harder to distinguish though. Yeah. yeah, it's got more of an R sound. Yeah. The next one is eh, so it's ne, eh. he, and eh. They're hard yeah, to distinguish. They are, but you're here, you're just listening for the E part of the sound, the eh part. Okay, so. let's hear. And that means I want to burp. Yes. Okay, let's hear. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's uh, man, I got that. That's got, I love this. I love this. <laughs> okay. You say these five words only apply to babies from zero to three months. Yes. Because then we lose that. So babies, it turns out, speak Paleo Hebrew. Yeah? Paleo Hebrew, as I said, is a language with no vowels, just an assumed ah sound after every le letter. So the letters are ah, ba, ga, ra, pa, la. What does that sound like? Yeah. Baby language. Yeah? So all babies know two words. They don't have to be taught. Two most important words for a baby to know. What are they? So, Paleo Hebrew, as I told you, for, for father, is Abba. Every language has a derivation of Abba, Papa. In Turkey, which is very close, is, is Baba, yeah? Dada, yeah? So, um, for mother, Amma. These babies don't need to be taught these words. So, yeah, we, we literally educate our, our babies out of the language. Imagine the baby's born and says, you know, hey, mum, I'm here. And the mother's going, oh, that's nice, she's, she's trying to talk. Oh. And it's like, oh, she doesn't speak the language. I'm going to have to learn her language. And that's how it works. Listen to this voice. Listen to the structure. Now, just remember the structure, the sound, the, the feeling of what she was saying. She was clearly excited. Listen to this. Now, did you notice the structure was the same? Even almost the words were the same. If you listened carefully to the little, little girl, she said Amma twice. She's talking to her father and she said mother twice. Yeah? Um, Arabic is very close to Paleo Hebrew because obviously the location. And you can almost hear they were almost the same. So um, in the 1500s, 15th century, sorry, um, there was a king, a Scottish king, um, James IV, I think, um, who basically marooned a deaf woman deaf and dumb woman, on an island, Inchkeith, um, with two newborn babies, and left them there for years. Right? Kept them, you know, gave, gave them food and stuff, but left them alone for years. Um, they came back, you know, um, after these children had grown up, and wondered if these two, two boys, who were brought up in silence, could speak a language. Now, um, the actual results were, were lost, but everybody who lived around that area say, and this is back in the 1500s or 15th century, they say that these boys could speak perfect Hebrew.